Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Scherr. In this video, Boomer and I from Transcriptions discuss our formulation process in detail, how we go to the ends of the earth to find various ingredients, how Dr. Ted's lab goes through various types of cycles. R&D is a huge issue with us, and we take a lot of time and a lot of effort to do it. We also discuss purity, potency of our products, the buckle trochee and how novel and amazing it is, but how challenging it is to scale. This is a fantastic conversation with Boomer and I. Enjoy. At Transcriptions, we do things a little bit differently, right? And yeah, from the beginning. I think it starts with the cast of characters in the company, but also we like to talk about internally this idea of novel formulations and a novel delivery mechanism. Yeah. So from the beginning, and this has also been somewhat of a difficulty from the business side of life, <laughs> we don't do things easy. And that starts with really our delivery mechanism. Yeah. But it's deliberate, right? Because what we're trying to produce is formulas for an effect, and we seek out effectiveness over really anything else. Yeah, so I mean, buckle trochees is what we use, right? And it's not an easy delivery device to make, but it's really effective. And we've been using it because in clinical practice, we've been using buckle trochees for decades for things like ketamine and hormones, and but it hasn't been easy to scale, has it? No, it certainly hasn't. <laughs> You're giving me a little PTSD here. <laughs> but anyway, when it comes to buckle trochees, what's been interesting about us and when we've come to market, there's been just a crap load of education as yeah. to what the buckle trochee is. Why do I need to stick this lozenge thing up into my buckle cavity? What is the buckle cavity? Yep. Why is it beneficial? Or buccal, maybe. Or buccal, if depending you're English. on. Yeah. yeah. Or we've got a few th people that say like troche as well, yeah, not trochee. Common. I yeah, guess the, the correct pronunciation, by the way, is trochee. Trochee, yes. But when it comes to uh, that trochee, the buckle trochee, we're really the first people to bring this out commercially. Right. And so let's talk a little bit about you know, first pass metabolism. Why does that matter actually? Yeah, so first pass metabolism is what happens when we digest. Things go through our stomach, they go through our small intestine, they go through our liver. Our liver is our detoxifying organ. So we have our liver and we have our kidneys. The liver does most of the detoxifying actually. And so what happens typically is that if you're digesting something through that whole process, you lose what's called bioavailability. You lose the active effectivity or the activeness of that ingredient. So a buccal trochee, what's nice about it is if you have it up here and it dissolves in your buccal mucosa, you prevent the degradation of many of those ingredients as a result of it not going through first pass metabolism. Okay, so novel delivery mechanism, but also novel ingredients. Right. And that started with the beginning too. Right. Again, a lot of product education. <laughs> right. How many, how many speeches have you given on methylene blue? I mean, it took us about, I think about three years to start really educating our audience. I mean, we had a core group of people in the beginning, but now it's expanded so much over the last four years. And that's because we now know how effective methylene blue can be in a huge amount of context. But the challenge is that it's been around forever and it is blue. <laughs> it is very, very blue. Very blue. And it can make your tongue blue. I've it makes your many a toilet. Yes, and it makes your urine blue. And so there are some things you have to consider. So, but I've given speeches at A4M and Integrative Health Symposium and, uh, and other anti-aging conferences. And now doctors are really excited about it and the consumers are too. And there's something pretty interesting about Methylene Blue because we spend just frankly, a, a, again, a crap load of money on testing and R&D and sourcing. We've gone to like the far flung regions of China to find things or even South Africa. Yep. And one thing about methylene blue in particular that I find interesting is that once you drop below pharmaceutical grade, you start to pick up these nasty things yep. like heavy metals yep. and lead, <laughs> cadmium, mercury, arsenic. Mm. Sounds like a perfect diet. It sounds like exactly what you want if you already have chronic inflammation or an infection. Uh, yeah. per, uh, to give you more. <laughs> yes. Because uh, everybody wants more chronic inflammation. I love heavy metals. No, uh, I don't. And so we've specifically sought out this USP or pharmaceutical grade methylene blue, and yeah. we do that with each one of our ingredients. Yep. So let's move on to another ingredient, which I find fascinating. Yeah. Caused me to go to a very interesting area of South Africa yeah. to hunt it down. But agarin, which also has a history in Finland and Russia with reindeer and urine. shamans and urine. But let, let's skip all of that and go right into, why should we care about agarin? Because like, I find it awesome because it has such a long, I guess, half-life yeah. that I take it at night, I go to sleep, I wake up in the morning, I'm calm, I'm relaxed, I'm ready to rock. Right, but even if you wake up in the middle of the night, which happens to a lot of people, I know it happens to you, Shh, you can get don't back- Don't tell anybody. 
you're a hardworking guy. <laughs> you got a big brain. You got a big, big, big brain. Thank big brain. you. Thank so you. what agarin does, it's a long-acting GABA agonist, which means that it works in the GABA system. GABA is a neurotransmitter that calms down the firing of our brain. And what we need to help us sleep is that GABA tone or increased GABA tone to prevent us from waking up. Or if we do wake up, to help us stay sleepy enough that we can go back to bed. And there's very, actually there is no other products out there that have this particular ingredient for sleep or really anything else. And this is the crazy mad scientist that we work with, Dr. Ted, our chief science officer, that goes through the end of the earth to find these things or to he research them. Yeah, to he researches fair, them. He researches <laughs> them. <laughs> yes. And then he sends us. Yes, and he sends us. Yeah. yeah. But now we have partnerships with places like South Africa and others in clinical institutions where we're creating these novel products and it's really exciting. Yeah, so we, I mean, we do have that partnership with the University of Free State in South Africa and that's been very fruitful for us. I, is, Agarin technically a fruit? I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, maybe it's a fruiting body. If fruiting have, body. There we go. If you have a, a fungus, I guess. I yeah, know. somebody who's a mycologist might get me on that one. Yeah. Uh, so after, I mean, look, Agarin has kind of changed our supply chain in many different ways. Yeah, yeah. But it's also a, a beautiful ingredient that I, I think has saved my sleep cycles, to be fair. Uh, let's, let's now go on to a different one. It's also GABA related, B3 GABA, mm -hmm. which I kind of went out of order of operations here, but okay. but B3 GABA is different from other forms of GABA. So uh, let me let me see if I get this correct. So if I take a typical GABA supplement, yeah, yeah, so uh, you know something that I buy and it says GABA all over it, mm -hmm. I swallow it. What are the chances that it actually crosses my blood-brain barrier? If you have a leaky brain, you're in good shape. But, but, but if you have a, have a <laughs> leaky brain, you also have other leaky. Yeah, leaky gut. Yeah, yeah, leaky gut probably. So GABA itself is a really big molecule, so as a result of that, it doesn't typically get across. But if you have a vitamin B3 attached to it, which is what we do at Transcriptions on Trocom, our product for anxiety or anxiousness and stress relief, it can get through the blood-brain barrier and it then hydrolyzes or breaks up and you have GABA in the brain, calms things down, and then you have vitamin B3, which is mildly activating, so you don't feel anxiousness and you don't feel tired, which is pretty novel. Okay, la last one here on the novel ingredients yeah. side of things because uh, look, we're not going to stop with the novel ingredients, which <laughs> also stop. is going to make my life more and more complex. Yes, but that's okay. Uh, so the no again, everything for an effect. Cordycepin. Yeah. Cordycepin. All right. Shout out to Pedro Pascal here. Pedro, what's because up? Because he also made our lives a little bit hard with that whole Last of Us thing. When you start talking about Last of Us, everybody yeah. thinks that the cordyceps mushroom is going to somehow. Uh, take over their brain, turn themselves into zombies, and all of a sudden the world is no longer really uh, a functioning place. Apocalypse, basically, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It would be an yeah. interesting thing. Uh, yeah. the uh, I got your back in an apocalypse, by the way. I appreciate that. Okay, yeah. so you are tougher than me. <laughs> Maybe. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. The thighs might just be for show. But the, all that hockey, I know. Yeah, the <laughs> cordycepin is different from cordyceps. Yes. This is a point of clarification. Very, very big point. All yeah. right, so Robert's rules of order here. Point of clarification, what the hell is cordycepin? Why should I care? So cordyceps is the mushroom, and then cordycepin is one of the main active ingredients, but like by weight, it's about up to maybe 1% of the mushroom. But cordyceps itself is 100 times more powerful for immune system optimization. Cordycepin. As cordycepin, yes. Cordycepin is 100 times more powerful as an immune system optimizer, as an anti-inflammatory, and it improves deep sleep as well. So we took this very specific compound, the most active in the mushroom, and we've made a, our product out of it. We actually have two products with it. So th this is interesting, and kind of let's just wrap things up here. And I'm going to give you a picture into Dr. Ted's lab because I've sat over his shoulder while he engages in all kinds of wicked research. Uh, but hours and hours go into the research for these novel ingredients, mm -hmm. and it starts with just a list of what works for a particular. Uh, formulation or something that we're trying to solve for so take for instance sleep and you build a list of everything that that causes uh, that really goes into sleep architecture mm -hmm. then you also get a list of what ingredients affect that sleep architecture and then what are most effective and then we kind of make that that giant what is essentially a spreadsheet right I you love, love spreadsheets. Yeah. I love spreadsheets. Yeah, yeah, and so then you decide exactly okay what's the most effective but also what's not illegal <laughs> and once, if it's, it's illegal, we cross it off. We might save it for ourselves sometimes. <laughs> but we also cross it off, throw it out, and we go with the, the ingredients that actually work for the effect that we're trying to solve. So whether that's agarin, cordycepin, 
or let's say methylene blue, B3, GABA, we're really after effectiveness rather than something that you can just get over the counter everywhere else.